Good evening and welcome to Zoom In on a Fresh Conversation. Tonight, our special guest is Mr. William Barlow, author of the book, The Audacity of Faith, The Diva Pack Transformation. Thank you very much for being here this evening, William. Thank you for having me. And so Zoom In on a Fresh Conversation is sponsored by Islands Diamonds, LLC, brought to you by Milton McCulloch, author of Love and Emancipation, and the host of Night Talk, L.D. Robinson from Ladero Press and the Fresh Book Festival 2022. If you have any questions for William, put them in the chat box. We will circle back to them at the end of our conversation. And I have to tell you that this is being recorded. It will be live on Facebook and then it will go up on YouTube at the end of our conversation. So good evening, William. Please take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience. Again, William Thomas Barlow Jr., son of Helen and Tom Barlow, <laughs> by way of Hartford, Connecticut. They say, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, big money, old money. Well, they forgot about Helen and Tom, so they packed me up with everything they had and moved on back down here to Miami. Uh, there were some problems in, in, in growing up, but uh, my grandmother took me on and she raised me. Mm -hmm. I'm a product of uh, Miami Jackson, senior high, product of uh, Bethune-Cookman University where I graduated with a degree in music product of uh, University of North Texas, where I got a master's in education. I was working on a double master's in education and music, but I let this friend talk me into going to law school because oh, I, yeah, I was getting mad with music because I was in a group and sometimes you just can't work well with nine people trying to get a contract. So <laughs> I got mad. I said, well, I just go, I let him talk me into going to uh, law school was the worst thing I ever did. I didn't complete that. I went to Texas Southern uh, School of Law, Thurgood Marshall School of Law. I did about a year and a half, but I had to quit and start working because I didn't come from a situation where I could go full time and didn't take care of what I needed to do to work. And at that time, there were no computers and everything like that. And you had to really struggle right. you know, to do what you did in law school. I right, mean, right, right. It's a cakewalk uh, now. <laughs> huh? It's pretty much a cakewalk now. It's hard. It yeah, it's a cakewalk now. <laughs> it's a dollar number. They're right yeah, in there. Right? Yeah, yeah. But um, I also went to a, a Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale, where I got an A degree in um, television and video production. Went there originally for audio engineering, but by the time I got there, I couldn't. They had dissolved the. Uh, the audio engineering program, but I got a little taste of it doing the television video production. Later on in life, I, since I had been working with so many areas dealing with finance, I said, well, I'm gonna go get me a master's degree in finance. Okay. So, I, so I, went, I went to American Military University, which is a very high class school online. And I got that and I got a certificate in uh, logistics management and supply chain management. So that's my story. I've worked for several corporations. My last job that I'm retired from is Miami-Dade County. Okay, so I have a friend who was uh, raised in Hartford in Charter Oaks. Oh, really? You know where Charter Oaks is? I don't know nothing about Hartford. <laughs> I mean, it was, I guess it was about two or three days after <laughs> I was born, they got out of there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Most of my family Families in, in Hartford, Connecticut, and New York, a lot of them have moved back down here to, to Florida. But yeah. basically, that's where all my father's people were in uh, Hartford. But I don't know anybody. Uh huh. I, I, I just, it, it was a, it, he said it was a hard place to grow up. So I just didn't know whether you had any connection well, to it or not. It was, well, I went back and visited, and I was ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready to leave. I was ready. I thought Miami was uh, right. No, yeah, right. That's what he said. You know, people don't understand that it's really a, it's a dangerous place up there in certain spots. Yes, ma'am. And so through all that, everybody, he managed to write a book called "The Audacity of Faith." the Diva Pack Transformation. I don't understand where he found the time. Uh, he must've done it right after he retired, I guess, right? Is that true? Is that when That's you started right. to write? So okay. I- Actually, it was a little bit after. 
Okay. I, I, it took me about a year and a half to write the book, but it was mm -hmm. a little bit after I retired. You're right. So the uh, audacity means two different things. Depending on its usage, how is it determined to be used in the title of your book? Okay, before I, before I explain that, let me give a shout out to my grandmother. Oh, hey, Grandma. She's not, she's not she, no, she's deceased, but I dedicated this book to her, okay. the first part of the book. So I want to mention her name, Janelle M. Racker, the love of my life. Everywhere I go, I'm going to pronounce her name because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have anything. Now, to get to the question, like you said, it's a double perspective. It is. It, like you were saying, it's like uh, if I'm preaching you the word of God, I, I have a boldness, a, a audacity in my faith, the boldness in my faith. If you don't like it, you say, well, I'm insulted. You're the audacity of you coming to me with that. I don't believe in that. My preferences aren't like that. How dare you? Right. You know, so the book comes, takes place in two different perspectives. I formulate a story and incorporate that in it. Um, I don't want to give away the story. The, the story is very good from the beginning to the end. So, um, but I didn't go in into reading it with that perspective. I didn't do that till I was in, at the end of the book. And I thought, let me look up the word audacity and see if there are more meanings that I understand, right? And so then it kind of clicked. It, it was a very good read. Thank you so much. Your book is very visual, but complicated in development. How were the character names picked? And did you do any of them through meaning of personal life? Like was somebody you know named those names or how did you come up well, with them? The character Tyson is named after my son. Okay. Uh, because when I was developing Tyson, he stuck, my son is about six foot six, got the braids working. Thank you, a player and all that, right? <laughs> so I said, well, let me. I got I, one of those two. <laughs> yeah. But all the other male characters are like an amalgamation of some part of me, whether real, uh, actual, or vicarious. But the female names is what I was really interested in because um, um, they're di very different. Yeah, I, that, that was just a thought process. Just a thought process. No particular body that I know or in my family. I probably heard it somewhere, but that's about it. I just came up with the names. I said, what sounds good? Oh, that's really? Okay. So did you have the characters before the story or the story before the characters? Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I didn't know what I was until I listened to Jerry Jenkins explain about writing books. He's one of the people I listen to when I go to YouTube, mm -hmm. teach how to write books. Mm -hmm. He says there are three different types of writers. <laughs> you have the pantser, you have the outliner, and then you have the hybrid. I'm the hybrid type. So what I do is combine both sitting by the seat of your pants and writing and outlining. Sometimes I write by the seat of my pants, you know, I just go with the flow, but I have to have that outline at certain points to give me direction. But like some, some guys can just write, 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 just write by the seat of pants and create the characters as they go. I have to sit down and do an outline and see which direction I want to go most times. And then after I get started, I turn into the pantser. Okay, then you're all full throttle. Full throttle. <laughs> for a while. Yeah, for I'm a while. Stuck. Yeah, <laughs> until you get stuck. And yeah. is that the, was that the hardest part, the stuck? Uh, and was yeah. it, or were you stuck because of not knowing where the story was going to go or stuck because of life events? Because that, that can stop you from writing. When you say life events, you mean in my personal oh, life? Oh, yeah, right. You know, somebody could die. You know, somebody gets sick in, no. sick in the house or, you know, um, there's many reasons why people get stuck and can't continue to write. Well, my stuck came from the fact that uh, I didn't, the dialogue, I want, I wanted to be in this book. God put something in me to do this book. And 
through him I write. And the first part of the book, when you read it, you'll see it's a lot of things happening with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you'll see some profane language in it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it interesting to capture the people, particularly at the young level. And sometimes in doing that, I have to make the dialogue witty or make the dialogue serious. And I go back and forth and rehearse which would communicate better with the people. Sometimes I will get stuck on that. But most times when I do the outline, I have a direction. It's just how to get there and keep the reader uh, uh, enjoying what I'm writing about. I don't want to lose their attention. And Jerry, jo Jerry Jenkins <laughs> said, well, if your opening is not good, you're not good. You, right. you, you throw the book away. Right. So I looked at that. I, said, well, <laughs> I think it's like the first five pages. Would you say, Mama Tony? Yeah, it's like the first five pages. If it doesn't catch you, then you know. Yeah. It, it gets set aside most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went back over the opening points constantly, constantly, because there was some 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 things in the future, some things in the past, and it went back and forth and back and forth. And that's really difficult to write. It's really difficult to mm -hmm. write. And that that caused some pause too, because after I went almost to the end, I had to come back. You sure did. It, it was done right. Yeah, it was done very, very well. And so how long have you been writing and is there a follow-up to this novel? <laughs> Just started writing. Since really? I was hard, I had no inclination. When you didn't write anything when you were younger, most of us have been writing forever. So. No. no. <laughs> I thought about it. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought about okay. doing a book or doing something like that. I wrote something down, but I didn't write anything out. I had a couple of friends who I would talk over certain scenarios about a book, but I never really got serious into doing it until after I retired. And see, after I grew as a Christian and God placed something in my heart, something in my spirit to do. And that's why I got to give him the glory and the credit on all this, because the majority of this book, it just sifts through me, mm. you know, because I'm not a pastor or anything like that. What was the other part of your question? <laughs> I was just yeah. talking and talking. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's fine. The other part of the question was, you left it for an opening for a book two. I got a book two coming. Okay. It's called The Audacity of Faith, Part Two, The Order of Men. Okay, The Order of Men. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, you left it wide open for there to be... I'm glad you saw that. Now I'm convinced that I did it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Thank you. Most you of the people. Me, huh? <laughs> most of the people on this Zoom tonight were avid readers, so uh, we kind of yeah. Oh, it's like it's like a musician when you know when the transition's about to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to feel it, right? So you did a good job. That's how I know you guys are, are readers, avid readers. Yeah. Because you see that. Because, yeah. you know, I was wondering, would anybody know that that's coming? Oh, yeah. You just confirmed that. Thank yeah, you. I mean, you're a musician, too. So you know that you have to know when the transition is about to happen. Your yeah. ear has to feel it, right? You yeah. have to know when the syncopation is about to happen. Your ear has yeah. to feel it. So it's the same. It's the same kind of response, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. Well, Tyson and his boys see the lady. Can I talk about it? A little sure, bit? go ahead. Yeah. Tyson and the boys. Tyson and Jordan and the boys, they see the ladies doing something. And it's like, hey, we men. Our wives are doing this. What are we doing? Right. And in the next book, I go deeper into spiritual warfare. Because mm -hmm. see, in my I, I touch it mildly in this book, but I didn't want to scare people away because a lot of people don't get that in church. And they mm -hmm. really don't understand how real it is. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I go deeper into it in the next book, because when you look at Black Lives Matter and other things like that, there's a lot of witchcraft and stuff happening in our environment, and we don't know what it is. You look at Chicago, you look at the riots and stuff like that. That is something that's spiritually happening. Atmospheric, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's spiritually happening, and it's 
Like when you look at the leaders of Black Lives Matter, they said they were witches. Mm. And see, they, oh, nothing happens unless somebody invites that evil in. And they were practicing something from the African culture where you in, uh, invite the ancestors. Mm. And that is very old in Africa. And, and it's branched off in the voodoo and uh, Santeria and other things like that. They probably don't even know what they're doing. They probably don't. When you pull, when you pull the, the libation out, that's part of the, the ritual. Mm. When, you, when you create food for the ancestors, that's part of it. But see, there's no ancestors. The ancestors are fake. The ancestors are actually demons. Mm. But people don't study enough to know these type of things. And when you open up a door like that, they go out and they inhabit people. And a lot of things I was seeing in my spirit, I know that these people wouldn't normally act like this. There's too much happening in America right now. Mm -hmm. You got people riding all over the place. You got people beating up on people. All the, sh the shooting that's happening in Chicago. Somebody open a portal for that to get in there. So in the next book, I touch on that and I speak to it. Whether you believe it or not, you have to say, that, hey, hmm, that might be. Uh, it's not really in a genre, Mama Tony. It's um, it's not romance, and it's not. Um... She thinks it's romance. No, 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 no. She asked the question. <laughs> the question was, "What do you think the genre is?" Right. It's hard. It's religious. Uh, mm, really, you would call it religious? Okay. Yeah, because see. That's the trick of it. I'm not saying I'm tricking people. It's a religious, the, romantic. All the romance up front is just a hook. I care about well, the Well, it's life. still there. Now. Come on, you, can't, Kenneth, you can't take it off. Huh? <laughs> Christian fiction. Thank you, LD. That's what it is. Christian fiction. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. All right. <laughs> I hate to put fiction on that, but. I had to decide on what it was going to be. They say Christian right. fiction. Okay. Christian fiction. That's that's what it is, Mama Tony. So uh, in this novel, a reflection on sororities and fraternities? Question mark. I don't, I don't, I don't have any, no, I don't have any problem. I'm an alpha, you know. I pledge those two. A lot of people don't know about them burning sands. I know about it all. But there's something today I don't, I'm not totally active because I don't bow with the altar of anything. And I don't give life to in, any inanimate object. You know, a lot of my frat brothers, they won't understand that. But uh, my God is a jealous God. And when you say I'm an alpha and I exhibit all these characteristics, oh God, it, God, it's God who has right, it. right, right. So, who is Alpha? Phi Alpha, just something that you take and say that's who we are. But where did that come from? It came from something bigger than what Alpha Phi Alpha is. You can't explain that to people; they don't understand it. But I don't. I only said that because it, you made a um, a point of calling it a pact. And when you become a fraternity or a sorority member, you you have a pact, well, right? Well, that's right. It's a covenant. It's a covenant, exactly. Just like with the Diva Pact Sisterhood, right? But they did a blood covenant. That's even more powerful. That's a form of witchcraft. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't understand that in the Bible, throughout the Bible, when you do a covenant. You invoke either good spirits or either bad spirits, but there's a covenant there, and you are making agreement with that with that ritual. Mm. A lot of people don't understand doing it. And so well, I'm not a theologian. I got some theologians on here tonight. But I'm not one of them. So, it's hard uh, to explain. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm sure they understand the covenants and all that, but. Um, I only brought that up because you called it a pact. And so yeah, they I made, know that. They made uh, an agreement between each other that they will protect each other and do everything for each other because they were tired of being mistreated 
right. by forces outside of their own little existence. So they say, well, we're going to make a covenant and we're going to take on the ideology of the feminist movement and the sexual revolution. And so they, they went that way. Mm -hmm. There's no, and no shade. I'm just saying, I just didn't, wasn't sure where you were going with that. Uh, I think the thread that you did was amazing. So thank you. Mary. So anyway, yeah. So why Florida and why Bethune Cookman University as a backdrop thread throughout the novel? That's what I know. Okay. I know Florida and I love Bethune Cookman University. That's my heart. I know Daytona Beach. That's my heart. You know, uh, they, uh, Bethune Cookman had some of the greatest people I will ever meet in my life. I had the mentors, time. mentors, uh, great mentors, great mentors, great people, great students. You know, Dr. Richard D. Moore, Perry Bronson, Susie Berry, the director. I was in the band. I was trombone section leader, and I had, and and and, and I didn't have. Uh, a father in my life constantly, you know, and a lot of times when the guys were at school, you had these guys who were father figures for you, you know what I'm saying? And that really meant a lot to guide you. And it was, it, like with my frat brothers, they all five of uh, our brothers, they really encouraged me to, 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 to take on who I really am. They gave me some kind of self-esteem mm. that I didn't come to school with. Because there were a bunch of guys that say, hey, we, we transcend the norm. We, 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 we have good grades. We do things the right way. And if you're going to be with us, you're going to have to change to that. And I appreciate that. And I love that. Because when I got to college, I could barely speak. Mm. And see, schools like HBCU schools and stuff like that, they give people who don't have the empowerment right off the bat. They give you a chance to learn and grow. And that's right. how they approach you do. And so do you think most young people have the audacity to realize life without faith is a hard role? I don't really understand the question. Can you break it down for me? I think that and what I'm saying is that a lot of young people have decided that um, being a part of a religious organization is not something they want to do. And so my question to you is, the young people don't have an audacity of faith. They don't have, a lot of them don't have a faith in a whole lot of anything because their parents don't have a whole lot of faith in anything. You know, I, the world of the Bible has just been open for me. I, I've learned so much about what the Bible is and what Jesus did and what everything transpired from Genesis to Revelation. It just blows. I'm not one of the type of people can cite uh, uh, chapter and verse, mm -hmm. but when I learned and understood what it was about, I see people and I talk to them, they don't have an idea all the things that are around you, that the spiritual world is all around you and you don't know what's happening. And our spiritual fight is daily, you know, and, and everything in the Bible talks about the spirit, but in church, they don't teach that. They don't teach it. It, it's some arcane concept that's woo, 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 something that you know they don't touch. They say Holy Spirit, but they don't really talk about it. It's not really something to discuss. And when you try to initiate the word of God, it's like you're just saying words and they don't have a greater meaning to it. Mm. Some do. Some children are. Some children are getting a hold of it. And they're going to tear this place up with, with their, their audacity of faith because a lot of kids now will really get in your face and they're going to preach and they're going to tell you and they're going to show you and they're going to pray for you. And that power of God will come on them and it will reach you and it will reach children their age and, 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 and it's going to be an explosion. But there's another segment that they don't have a clue. Mm. And with this book, I'm trying to reach those. Right. They say, oh, man. <laughs> okay. Somebody come back from the dead. Oh, I can't buy that. You know, I can't buy that. But then if you read the Bible, 
that a lot of people were projected to come back from the dead. Mm. So, you know, so hopefully somebody will look and say, I'm gonna check this out. I'm gonna read and see what this, what these, what these spiritual gifts are. Can somebody really do that? You know, because at, at one point, what, what's her name? Um, Tony had to come to the understanding that, hey, it's real. And see, in the hospital, I have the mother, the grandmother praying. And none of them knew what that was about. Right. She was invoking a spiritual, spoken the spiritual realm to counteract death. Hmm. We have that ability inside of us. We just don't know how to tap into that. It's there, it's spiritual. So, so how did you become so learned? Did you just read the Bible yourself or you, you didn't go to theology school? So yeah. it's a long process. Uh, and you're going to think I'm crazy, but well. I, I was, <laughs> no, that's okay. But I, I was, what it, I think doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> law school and, uh, me and my boy Tom, we were studying hard. And I said, well, I'm going to do a fast. And one thing I tell you, don't fast if you don't know the word, right? I went on a seven-day fast, three days, no water. On the sixth day, this lady I was working with at a job, I saw her in a dream. She had, the couple of days before, she said she had cancer, right? And after I got to the sixth day, I saw her in my dream, and I prayed healing on her. When I came back to right back to work, she said they couldn't find the cancer, right? Oh. So that tripped me. I said, no, 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 no. I wasn't hearing it. And right after that, everything bad you could think in this world start happening to me. It's not until I got of age and understand the word of God, that at that point, God had dropped something down in my spirit and evil forces knew what it was. Because I started writing music that I knew I didn't have the ability to write on my own. And when I wrote this book, here it comes again. I, I, I just didn't have the ability to do something like that. It had to come from another place. I haven't written a, a, my life. I just told you that. Mm -hmm. I just started writing this after I uh, uh, retired. Retire, right. Or it came from somewhere else. Yeah. Now, some people are not going to believe that. I don't know about I that. Think, I think any writer will believe that. We believe it. So. Yeah. I think anybody on here who's written a book understands that those things are uh, universally given to you. you. You don't have it by yourself. You just don't do it by yourself. So, yeah. We all really do understand it. Well, I did at one point. I was, before I, before I retired, and here's another point you're going to say I'm crazy too. But I've actually heard the word of God speak. A lot of people never heard it, but I have. And I was at a low point in my life. And uh, I was just lost. And I just started praying. And I put this in the book on another part. But God said to me, you're not alone. I jumped like this. And I go, well, what? And it sounded like my voice. Mm. And I'd be very careful about telling people this. I guess I'm telling the whole world now. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but uh it's called the World Wide Web. <laughs> people, people uh, but at that time I didn't actually I heard people could hear the voice, but I didn't know you could actually hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. But that's the last time I've ever heard it. And everything else comes to come to, like with this book. It just, I just started writing and I, I just know what to write. So talk about your publishing process. I mean, a lot of young authors and people who are just starting out with their books uh, really have a problem with the, the whole process of editing and cover producing. Tell us about your process. Well, see, I... I I kind of wish I'd went through that process, but I was with Zular Press and I didn't have to go through a whole lot because they took care of everything for me. You were with who? Zular Press. Zulon. Okay. Zulon. Christian books. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I had to uh, 
I shelled out some cash and and I paid for what I got. And I had an incredible editor and they take you in as a team. And for those people interested in to do the book, they will finance you. They will finance you if you got a book. They will finance it, let you take a little bit out your pay. I didn't want that. I just wanted to take care of everything, get it done, get it out the way. And uh, uh, that's where, that's, that's where only- So tell us about the cover. That's me. Okay. <laughs> I struggled with that. Okay, most they, of us they, do. They developed the, 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 the word part of it. But I said, Jesus, I'm gonna have to find a book. I'm talking about five women. I'm talking about a whole conglomerate of things. How do I mesh this into one setting? How do I make a statement? So I'm looking through, you ever heard of Shutterstock? Oh yeah. I'm going through, because the Zulon has a- um, An account. An account with Shutterstock. Mm -hmm. I'm going through Shutterstock because they leaving it up to me, right? I'm looking at, I'm about to get up and then that ump's you <laughs> Look yeah. over the art. Look over the art. So I go to art. When I through that company, then all of a sudden, boom, there it is. And then I call back to my people at Zula and say, I like this. You may not like it, but I like it. Tell me how you like it. They didn't say nothing back. They just took it. That was it. Because what all the stuff that I was trying to tell them to put on the covenant. It, they, they was having headaches because I was trying to put too much, couldn't figure out right. how to give a message. Because, and then there it was. It stood out. I could, I could say a lot in this woman's face, you know. So, what, so you yeah. would say that um, for first-time authors, make sure that you have a uh, control of the cover and, and, and what it means to you and not let the publisher do that. Yeah, I would say that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know any better at first because I, this is the first time I ever did a book. But they they they, they went along with me and said, whatever you like. But okay. I, would think, I would think that anybody is trying to do a book, first off, you want to make sure that you can get your message across because you spent time, effort to write this book and you want to send the proper message to, to the people who you think are going to be reading your book. So like you say, it's very important that your your, your cover tells the story. Mm -hmm. And for you to be hands-on. Tell me about your editing process. Did you have to, did you have any fight with the editor, editors about what could stay and what could go? Because you know, your voice has got to be heard in your writing and sometimes editors want to kind of scratch it out, so. She said, she paid me a compliment, she said, God, out of all the authors, I've never seen somebody write so clearly. But they did want to do the chapters. They had a problem. I said, no, I'm not going to mess with the chapters. They like that because I didn't want to segregate it how they wanted to do in chapters. I don't so, write in chapters either. So, yeah, yeah I understand. I just mm -hmm. wanted to flow like that. Right. Now, the thing is, I have to be honest. Thank you, God, for Grammarly. <laughs> Grammarly is your friend. Love Grammarly, because I take Grammarly and I can write anything. You know, I go to Grammarly. Grammarly say, well, you know, there's some premium stuff here. I say, I ain't going to pay for that. I just right. sit around. With just a little. It, <laughs> and so tell me. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, we all know what you're talking about. Well, you know. We all wrote way back. I, my my yeah. first book was in 08. I think I can, can say that at least Angie B and LD were kind of all in the same uh, group. But there was yeah. no Grammarly. No, it wasn't no Grammarly. Uh, there was no Grammarly in 08 and 210 and 2010. Yeah. And so we, 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 we had to struggle. We had to struggle. <laughs> spread it out, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, no Grammarly. That's what LD said. So... Uh, tell me something about the whole process, things that you learned that you will never do again for book two while developing well, and publishing your book. I learned that you should write in Chicago style because I wrote it in MLA. You know, when I was in college, we used to write all the MLA. Right. So I said, they said, well, 
uh, 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 Amazon won't take it. That's in Chicago's guy. So I had already finished. I had I'm sorry. I don't know the difference between those. What are you talking about? And a very little difference. But it's a style <laughs> that it's a style where they do the bibliography a certain way as opposed from MLA style. It's a, it's a, it's a, what's the word I want? It's a structured way of doing things. Most copyright people, when they work for journalists and stuff, they use Chicago style. Most people, when they in the academic segment, they use mostly MLA. I forget the name of the term MLA, but they use MLA. And when you get out in the world, I'm finding out, because I didn't know, most people use Chicago style because that's what they want, that's how they want you to present it. It's not too much of a difference. So thank you uh, to Word. All you gotta do is go up in Word, hit a little button, and it'll transform everything for you. Because when you go on at that tabular in Word, it asks you what style you want to write in, whether it's Chicago or MLA. And then it creates your bibliography how you want to how you want your style to go. Okay. I learned something myself. I didn't really realize there was two different styles. I didn't know it either. <laughs> yeah. I know and it I'm either. working on my fourth book and I'm just writing away. So I don't know. <laughs> no no, no holes, <laughs> boy. <laughs> just write, write, write. Are you going to develop or produce a trailer for the book series? Uh, they already did. Uh, the Zulon Press did it at, at my direction. Uh, I haven't I seen did, it. Huh? The trailer. It's online all the time. Uh, I, I guess Got I the rose it. with the tombstone on it. That's a logo. I'm talking about like oh. a short movie. No, it's a movie. Oh, it's a movie. No, I didn't, I didn't. Click, on, click on it, it takes you to YouTube. Okay, okay, okay. If you go to YouTube and say W-T-B-A-R-L-O-W, mm -hmm. click YouTube and W-T-B-A-R-L-O-W, as soon as you click it, you'll see a uh, tombstone with a ro some roses on top of it. Okay. That's my trailer. Okay, and so do you think, I don't care, you don't have to tell me how much it costs, but was it, was it worth the money? No. It wasn't worth the money because, see, the thing is, I got more out of putting that little caption of the book to advertise right. rather than the trailer because I got more reviews off of the book cover than I did the trailer. But, see, you make money on Amazon. Well, not Amazon, on YouTube, too, right. by, by the clicks on there. And my book has got a, quite a few clicks. So, I, well, it's about 100 and some odd, but as far as Amazon, that's pretty good. I mean, they do things in the millions and hundreds of thousands, but for a book, that's not bad, just jumping out the, you know, the cradle, you know, 100 some odd for a couple right. of months. Right. For your first... Yeah, your first shot. That's a good. That's first pretty good. Shot, not that bad. Mm -hmm. and I keep doing the uh, putting the videos online. Hopefully, they increase the uh, the people coming to view the the the, the uh, video. So, tell us about the life lessons you believe uh, can be recognized in your book. <laughs> I'm gonna have to read some stuff here. Read Is what? Oh, read something? Okay? Yeah, absolutely. This is your hour. You do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my methodology and motivation. All right. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. I said my motivation was to spread the inherent word of God to argue against the belief in evolution feminism, Marxism, climate change, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, differences in color, intersectionality, fluidity and gender ID, and homosexuality. I offer a cure for humanity, the word of God. I do this through creating a story of secular people, five women trying to find meaning in their, in their lives. And, and the lessons they learn off of this uh, uh, somewhat 
Let me get these things. The women learn a lesson on when they turn over into an understanding of Christ and everything like that, they learn the audacity of faith. Mm -hmm. They learn to inclusive of forming a personal relationship with Christ, Jesus Christ. They learn that these in these tumultuous times as we see in an intersectionality prone post-truth culture to declare the truth found in the word of God, the panacea for all that ails us, one must possess a bold kind of faith. Then these are the areas of faith they learn. The audacity of faith to break through and help save the lost and the needy. The audacity of faith to always put God first. The audacity of faith to continue sharing with others his inherent word. The audacity of faith to persistently pursue wisdom and understanding in the world. The audacity of faith to never let go of God's word, no matter what your eyes will see, your ears will hear, or your feelings might be. Six, the audacity of faith to always speak truth to power. The audacity of faith to speak the truth even when those you love act against you, threaten you, or desert you. The audacity of faith to keep doing what is right even when you believe his voice has gone silent and the way forward is not readily apparent. The audacity of faith to know that whatever your circumstance, God loves you and will never leave you nor forsake you. The audacity of faith not fearing to stand alone, even in the face of hostile opposition to what you believe. The audacity of faith, even when eclipsed by rejection, you keep loving your heart, loving people as Christ love you. And finally, the audacity of faith, even if standing in the shadow of death, you fear no evil, knowing that you reside under the shadow of the Almighty and that you are not alone, for you know he is with you. These are the life lessons that these five, these four young women learned from Mr. Timmons and his teaching about the audacity of faith. Mm, interesting. Well, yeah, I think you, I think you, I think you hit all the marks. When people read the book, hopefully they will sense that yeah, yeah, and yeah. understand that. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. William Barlow? Can I say one thing for this? Yeah, yes, yes, uh-huh. Now, see, on the other side, like we said, the audacity of faith is a dual perspective, right? Mm-hmm, it I is. Have those items. On the other side of that is a rejection of that boldness. Exactly. Those are the two perspectives. So the, the, we do have a question and it is, uh, were you at Miami Jackson during the days of Mr. Roscoe Speed? Yes. <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wasn't yes. that the choir director? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Miss Wiley, you can come on if you'd like to address that question. I think Roscoe Speed was the crowd director. I'm not sure. I don't know whether she can. Want to come back I on? Ms. One of the name. Hmm? I don't know. Uh, yes, she says yes. I remember the oh, name. Oh, there she is. There yeah. she is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. He was I the was, choir director? He was the choir director, yes. Yes, ma'am. I was in the band with Eric Knight and Moscone. Yes, yes, yes. I lived in Miami during those times. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> uh, I taught at Brownville Sub. Oh, okay. Uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar. And Daytona, did you know Harry Bernie? Then I, I know the name, but I can't uh, uh, Oh, you're a youngster. Okay. Good. <laughs> you ain't that young. <laughs> You just didn't know I'm, Harry Bernie. I'm just saying. At first I said I was old, but she's out of the so I, I take what she just said. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why you didn't know Harry Bernie. I thought everybody in Daytona knew Harry Bernie. I, I know the name. Yeah. What, 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 what did he do? What was he do? He was a singer. Uh, he was actor. a singer. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah. I know the name. Theater. Right. Uh, yeah, he was very, he was a consummate actor. He could do anything yeah. and sing anything. 
Right, Broadway performer. Yeah, everything. Yeah, he was, he was really good. Name. Very sad when he died. Uh, so, <laughs> interesting book. I, oh I'm no, it's a fabulous it. book. It's a quick. It's an easy read, even though it's almost three hundred pages. So, wow. um, yeah, it was very good. So the other question is: Were you in church growing up? This is yeah. from Miss Janice Kearney, who was the diarist for William Jefferson Clinton. Yeah, I was. When when I do my dedication to my grandmother, I talk about my irritating behind when she used to drag me to church. She dragged me to Mount Zion. Those in Miami know Mount Zion Baptist Church. That was our church for the longest. She used to sing in the choir, and she would drag me up there, right? And me and my other boys from the Sunday school, we would act the fool, right? And she would pull me up in the choir. That's where I got my desire to do music mm. from her because she was the lead soloist in the choir. But uh, I think God had, 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 had something on me from then because one day, she, one Sunday, she didn't come to church, right? And I was in church, which is, and me and my boys, we just acting up, boom. <laughs> and then they opened, up, they opened up the church and said, then something's going on up there, going on up there. I just listened and walked on up there and joined the church. Wow. And I didn't know I was getting ready to get baptized, right? By the time I got home, my grandmama, you did what? Because the, the ladies in the church had already called her, right? <laughs> no, to, Tommy, that, that, was, that was the call. Tommy joined the church, Jen. Tommy done joined the church. He started walking in the door. You did what? And she was all excited about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's another comment. Let me see what it says here. Um, I do appreciate your writing that refer to God appearing quiet. That is one of the biggest compliments from our youth. They don't hear from God. Thank you for that. So thank you for that. What was that question? What was that it wasn't a question. It was a statement. I do, yeah, appreciate, well, I do appreciate your writing that refer to God appearing quiet. That is one of the biggest compliments from our, com, complaints, I'm sorry, from our youth. They don't hear from God. Okay. And I think that's true, but you know what? Sometimes you have to hit, sit still to hear. Yeah, you do. And I don't think a sometimes lot of our youth take the time. Sometimes you don't sit still till you get in trouble. Right. <laughs> When you get broken, you can hear all kinds of stuff, you know. You gotta Some sit people still. never been broke. Mm -hmm. You gotta sit still to hear the word, right? So uh, any other questions? I thank you all for being here this evening. So I will ask you at this point, uh, William, uh, to share how we can get copies of your book with the audience. Uh, there, my book is on sale right now with... Uh, uh, at Zulon Press, it's on Amazon, it's at Barnes and Nobles. And uh, uh, if you do purchase the book, I would appreciate some feedback. I would appreciate a rating on Amazon because it helps with the sales also. But those are the places that you can purchase the book. It's about, uh, what is it now, 1949? Mm -hmm. They're on the price, especially if you got Prime. They're going to give you a little break on that. Or you can get it Kindle for $9.90 something. I forget. So one of the questions is, why is in your book categorized? How is it categorized on Amazon? It's Christian fiction. like. Oh, that. is it? Okay. Yeah. I don't okay. like to use that term. Oh, yeah. They like fiction about Christian to me. <laughs> but that's what they, you know, that's what they want to use. So, you know, they don't know better, so... This is my first time writing a book, and I know better now, right? Right, and now you know better. <laughs> now I know better. Any other questions? All right, so Mr. Barlow, the thing that I ask all my guests is to give me, to leave us with a pearl of wisdom. Lean not on your own understanding, but every word that comes out the mouth of God. But I got something else for you, too. Okay. <laughs> something I learned in college that has stayed with me well in law school that has stayed with me all my life, and it helps me in my writing. It's called my 4D method of thinking. 4D method of thinking. 4D method of thinking. Okay. 
define, discuss, distinguish, develop everything into a logical conclusion. Okay, say it again. Everything. The four say it again. Define, okay. discuss, distinguish, develop everything into a logical conclusion. Okay. So that would be Mr. Barlow's Pearl of Wisdom on Zoom in on a Fresh Conversation. This is his book. The Audacity of Faith, the Diva Pack Transformation, and you can get it on Amazon. Do you have personal copies that you sell yourself or no? I have personal copies, but I'm not selling them. Uh, I, I, I have paid for people to sell them. So okay, I understood, understood. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. Selling them by But I do a lot of advertisement for them. So. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you see that, right? Yeah. So thank you very much, Mr. Barlow, for being here on Zoom in on Fresh Conversation. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for being here again on a Monday night. And uh, good night. Good night. Good night.